Hi guys and welcome to episode 4 of Linux for Beginners. In this video we're going to be covering Wine and especially Wine 2.0 and what in theory the new features are, how to install it and a few other bits and pieces as well so do stick around. So a quick explanation of what Wine actually is. I think Wine actually stands for Wine is not an emulator, or at least it used to anyway as a sort of joke, but either way the main thing is that it's a sort of compatibility layer that allows you to actually run Windows programs directly on Linux. Uh, it's uh, it basically, I think it installs the Windows kernel for you, it creates a sort of C drive uh, and then creates a sort of virtual disks effectively to install your programs into, uh, which is kind of an interesting way to do it. It does mean that there's a few issues with it and especially in Wine 2.0, hopefully those are fixed. Although I did have quite a few issues, especially on Linux Mint with actually getting it to work. So feel free to let me know your progress with this in the comments down below as well. But nonetheless, in theory, you should now be able to do quite a lot more. Uh, but here here is a few basics of how to install Wine as well as stuff like Wine Tricks and also how to install some Windows programs including Microsoft Pinball and Microsoft Office 2013. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your application manager and install Wine. I also recommend that you install Play on Linux, Wine Tricks, uh, make sure you install Mono as well as it's one of the main things that Wine uses. I also recommend that you install uh, stuff like Wine Gecko as well, that can be quite useful especially for uh, if you want to install Office and then once those are installed you can look at the Wine configuration menu, change which sort of uh, operating system, which version of Windows you want to be emulating and a few other settings including graphics and that sort of thing and check out the other DLLs and APIs that are available for you and import new ones if you like. Now this is technically Wine 2.0 but unfortunately I haven't really got it properly working yet so just bear that one in mind. I uh, also highly recommend Play on Linux, it's a thing that a program that effectively makes use of Wine to uh, effectively install games that for example like Microsoft Pinball isn't even available on Windows 10 so that's quite fun. Um, obviously the main thing you're going to be using uh, Play on Linux and Wine for are generally simpler games and simpler programs that you can't normally run obviously if they're Windows based programs that don't have a Linux alternative. Play on Linux has a a load of especially GOG games available you can actually install uh, Microsoft Office as well. I actually got that working eventually, although it did take me quite a few attempts, and you can only really use the 32-bit uh, version. I think Wine is mostly written uh, for a 32-bit program, so it means that you will have a lot of compatibility issues if you are running a 64-bit operating system, which if you have more than 4 gigs of RAM, you're definitely going to want to do, so just bear that one in mind. But uh, overall, it still is pretty nice. It's still a very useful program, and of course, if the, the the application that you want to run, the Windows program that you want to run, is relatively simple and it's fairly decent on this. Wine Tricks is actually quite a useful thing if you want to install a program that is a little bit more complicated. It will help uh, download all the DLLs and uh, other installers and sort of uh, you know repositories that you need to be able to run uh, more complicated programs, especially stuff that require direct text. Or actually, you can actually use uh, the X input uh, DLL as well if you want to use an Xbox 360 controller. That's also a really nice feature that uh, Wine Tricks allows you to install install can be quite complicated at times uh, especially if it has an error it just completely shuts down and then you need to go back and recheck everything that hasn't been installed already so that can be a little bit annoying but nonetheless as I said uh, the biggest thing that I faced personally anyway was 32-bit uh, versus 64-bit obviously I'm running a 64-bit operating system but with Wine only really working with 32-bit pretty much everything was having a fit with uh, trying to install stuff so uh, if you are a, a seasoned Linux user and you know how to resolve any of those issues feel free to let me know in the comments down below but uh, yeah otherwise that uh, you can install and use Windows programs which is really nice especially if there are are no uh, Linux alternatives to whatever program you're using, and especially if it's nice and simple, something like Office not necessarily a 3D game, then uh, you shouldn't have too much of a problem, unless obviously it's 64-bit, and then you might, but nonetheless, as I said, it is a really nice tool and very functional and useful as well. Now in theory with Wine 2.0 and 2.0.1 and all the future releases as well, you will be able to actually have a lot more support for stuff like games directly on Linux as opposed to using a virtual machine or dual booting. Uh, so that is uh, very exciting. Unfortunately I couldn't get it to work properly as there doesn't seem to be proper support for Wine 2.0.1 on Linux Mint at the moment. Uh, and while I did manage to install 2.0.1 as you likely saw, this is still not quite properly 
probably there and I think I'm missing a few packages. So I will hopefully revisit this when I have a bit more uh, sort of stability with this uh, and we'll see where we can go from there. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea of what Wine is, how to install it, what Wine Tricks is as well and how to make use of that. And of course, uh, just generally uh, what Wine can do as well as what it should be able to do in the near future once some more distros are more properly supported and is available through the Synapse Package Manager as opposed to manually installing it and stuff like that. But nonetheless, uh, I hope that was kind of interesting for you. Of course, do bear in mind that I'm still a complete noob to Linux. The, the full title of the series is Linux for Beginners by Beginners, uh, and that is because I am still a complete noob. So if you have any comments, you're an experienced Linux user, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try and sort of uh, do sort of updated versions of this in the future. And of course, if I do actually get 2.0 working, and I get some proper game support working as well, then I will do a full video on that in the future as well. But uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of that. I'll leave some other Linux videos. If you haven't seen the start of this series, I highly recommend you check those out. And of course, uh, feel free to subscribe. And especially if you know a Linux noob or someone that you just want to convert to Linux, then feel free to share this series with them. Hopefully it's been uh, a decent, uh, you know, enough way to learn Linux as a noob. I mean, it's been easy enough for me to actually get to know this sort of stuff. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's useful for you. So check out some of the other videos over here and we'll see you all in the next one.